So Paul, all right, we, we, we have our giant dish. We know how we can send signals in space and receive signals in space. Works perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a few subtleties that happen as we're sending our signal into space, right? So here we have our Tinman Villa tracking station, sending data and sometimes receiving data from a satellite. But what actually happens as we broadcast that beam or receive that radio light in space? Now, ideally, you would like to send the signal so it only goes to your receiving dish. So you've yes. got a receiving dish here, and you'd want a beam that was, let's say the receiving dish here was one metre wide. Yep. You'd like to send a beam one metre wide focused exactly on that. That's right. In that case, all the power you radiate, radiate will get all the way through space and get there. In that case, you wouldn't need too much power here. Yes. So that'll be great. But how does that, but that doesn't actually work like that, does it? I wish it did. I really <laughs> wish it did. But there's a problem, and radio frequency is the major problem of something called diffraction. Yes. Now, diffraction means that waves don't go where you tell them to. <laughs> um, you can see this at like the mouth of a harbour when waves, water waves yes. come in. As they come in, they will tend to spread out. This is actually something fundamental in the nature of waves. Yes that uh, any wave, if you put it through a narrow gap, like for example the front of a dish, yep. it will spread out. How much it spreads out depends on how long the wavelength. Long yes. wavelength waves spread out more, yep. and also it depends on how big your aperture is. A really big aperture gives less spreading out, yep. and a small aperture gives enormous amounts of spreading out. It's, like, it's that antenna, right? If you had a single antenna, yep. it can go sideways or up and down, yep. a big dish a little bit more focused. Yes, if you look at the next slide, you can see that um, you've got your emitter out here, yep. and the signal's going to start spreading out further and further. And um, what that means is the amount of energy you've got is being spread over a larger and larger and larger area. So the further away we look, the larger the area we're essentially transmitting to, which means the area maybe we want is receiving less energy to it. Yes, so let's say you're putting out like 100 watts of power. That's right. To begin with, that 100 watts is just spread over your dish. Yep. But by the time it's a million kilometers into space, it might be spread over several kilometers, which means any one dish is only going to pick up a tiny fraction of it. By the time it's out at Mars, it might be spread over a million kilometers. So that means you're getting you know, like one part in a million of it hitting your dish. Which means that you're actually not as efficient as you want. So even though you may say, hey, we can transmit gigabytes or terabytes worth of data on Earth, by the time it wakes it all to Mars, we're a millionth or a billionth sometimes of that energy coming back. Yes, a lot less than a millionth and a billionth. In <laughs> fact, it's a very, very tiny fraction. I mean, all the radio telescopes on Earth for, their, for the entirety of their, the last 70 years of research have collected about the same energy as released by one drop of rain landing on the ground. It's not a lot, is it? No, it's not a lot. And so this is kind of the, the problem that we actually start having with radio communications is it's efficient because we can look long areas, we can build them really wide, we can figure out how to convert them from transmitting to receiving, but we can't stop the nature of the beam essentially spreading in space. Yeah, and so this is, um, there's a whole field called information theory, which will tell you, okay, so let's say you've got a signal with a particular power and it's spread over, so what you receive is much less than what you emit, and there's going to be a certain amount of noise because of the thermal actions in the uh, antenna. And so if you know here's how big the signal is going to be, here's how big the noise is going to be, you can therefore work out how many bits of data you can receive per second. Yep. And if you are, have, say, two very big dishes broadcasting each other from about a metre apart, then you can get, you know, stream Netflix, so you, can, you can transmit enormous amounts of power. If on the other hand your dishes are small and they're a very long way apart, like ones at Pluto and ones back here, you might only get like one or two bits per second. In which case, you know, the image is, you know, quite a lot of megabits. That's right. That's quite a lot of megaseconds to transmit something like that. So which means that either we need more dishes to try and work together to download them, or it's going to take a longer time to download that data. Both of which kind of present real challenges if we want instantaneous data from our spacecraft on Mars or around the Earth. Yeah, so basically you want to get, send more data back and forth. You want, first of all, more power. Yep. Now on Earth, that's not a problem. You can plug in a power station and put out huge amounts of pipe, put too much power, it'll melt your emitter. <laughs> that's a different problem, but that's right. Uh, but in principle, put a lot of power out. Yes. 
But then you need to make sure it's going where you want, so you want the biggest dish possible. That's right. But then you want a big dish on your spacecraft to collect more of it. I mean, if your spacecraft's like this big, all the radio signals that are going up here and down there are missed, they're wasted. Exactly. It's only the ones that hit the dish. That's right. So the bigger your dish, the more you're going to pick up. But that presents a lot of challenges. You can't put a two-kilometer dish in space, unfortunately. Well, yeah, it would have to fold out somehow. <laughs> but it's certainly um, the more weight you have of dish, that's, right. that's going to be less payload for rocket fuel or um, oh, astronaut exactly. snacks or anything else it's going to be. So ideally you'd want a small dish on your spacecraft and a big dish on Earth. But the small dish on your spacecraft is going to give you trouble. It's also going to really send the signal back. Yes. Because the signal from a small dish in space is going to spread out enormously and only a tiny fraction is going to hit your dish on Earth. Now again, I guess if you build a bigger dish you can hear more of it, but there's still just a limit to how much we can do. Yes, yeah, so basically if you make your dish in space 10 times smaller, you have to make your dish on Earth 10 times bigger. And given we've already seen the dishes on Earth like 100 <laughs> metres across, uh, you're going to make a thousand a kilometre sized dish. There's going to be a physical limit to how many dishes we can put around the and Earth. And you have to have to, the dish to point at where your spacecraft is. <laughs> so I suppose you could take a giant valley and put a big dish in like the old Arecibo Radio Observatory, but then it's only going to look straight up and if Mars is over there, that doesn't help you very much. Exactly. So we have a lot of challenges in trying to get the right balance between getting enough signal and transmitting enough signal and just being physically practical. Yeah, there's a cost trade-off. So if you spend more on your ground stations, have bigger dishes, as, then you can send and transmit more power and therefore maybe save a bit of money on a spacecraft. Yep. Um, it's obviously cheaper to build things on Earth than in space, so usually the dishes on Earth are much bigger than the dishes in space, as we saw with the, your visit to Tim Bimbilla. Yep. Um, but you can't go too far. <laughs> Exactly. And, and I think this is one of the things where we talk about why do we need all of these dishes doing all these things? Well, it's actually just a lot easier to build more of them on Earth so we can listen better, we can listen more, and we can listen to more at a time to get enough power. But this has then the political problems because politicians love to, we've sent a space probe to whatever, whereas we've built a bigger antenna on Earth doesn't, doesn't seem quite so exciting. But that bigger antenna on Earth means that you can pick up the data from your smaller <laughs> spacecraft out on Pluto or wherever That's it might right, because you could send it and if it's not transmitting the data back then you just have a very expensive piece of junk in space.